In the fullness of time, there are three questions that speak directly to the issues of human uniqueness, purpose, and destiny. Does intelligent life exist anywhere else in the universe? Will human beings ultimately spread across the galaxies and colonize the cosmos? Is it an accident or a necessity that self-aware creatures like us have appeared in this universe? No questions carry greater meaning. Finding answers would forever change how we think of ourselves. Next, on Closer to Truth, will intelligence fill this universe? Welcome to Closer to Truth. I'm Robert Kuhn. Will intelligence fill this universe? It's a killer question that embeds human yearning and wondering about purpose and destiny. And here to answer it are people who really know what they're talking about. But be prepared for some surprises from our distinguished guests. Dr. Gregory Benford brings the dual perspectives of a working astrophysicist and a leading science fiction writer to the question of life in the universe. Dr. Bruce Murray is co-founder with Carl Sagan of the Planetary Society, whose members support the search for intelligent life in the universe. Dr. Leon Letterman, winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics, is the author of The God Particle. Dr. Francisco Ayala, a leading thinker in biology and philosophy, is a former president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Dr. Frank Tipler, is co-author of The Anthropic Principle, which envisions that the universe and humans have a very special relationship. Greg, do you think it's the destiny of human beings to colonize our galaxy and in the fullness of time, the whole universe? Pretty much. I think this species has, as its main virtue, tried to move into new territories, take up new life sites, and I don't think anything's going to stop us. Bruce, what's the likelihood that intelligent life exists anywhere in the universe and do you think we'll be able to hear from it? I certainly think it must exist elsewhere. I don't think that we're some kind of scientific miracle here. That's an intuitive belief. One cannot justify this in a fully analytic form. As far as whether we'll uh, contact it at some, in the fullness of time, certainly. Leon, why do most astronomers fully believe, really, what Bruce just said, that there almost certainly must be intelligent life uh, uh, abundantly in the universe? I think it's a question of numbers. Uh, probably it was a physicist who first uh, speculated about this, but that's a side issue. Uh, just the numbers. There are so many uh, stars. There are yeah. so many solar systems. Recent data showing that, in fact, that expectation is valid. Yes. Uh, and then when you put all this together, like that famous guy on television said, there are billions and billions and billions of possibilities. And uh, therefore, the, on the sheer basis of chance, even though our own existence on this planet is uh, uh, miraculous in the, in the sense of low probability, uh, we have enough cases, it seems to me. I think that our judgment is that there are enough cases out there uh, that the situations favorable to life uh, broadly defined, uh, intelligent life uh, is very likely. Francisco, you are a professor of biology and philosophy at the University of California at Irvine. Why is the question of intelligent alien life always addressed by physicists and hard science? Why don't, they, why don't biologists get involved in this? They think we're not smart enough? No, because when we answer it, we answer no. And that's not a very interesting <laughs> question. That's why they don't it's, ask us. It is because it's a, it is a biological improbability. I would answer like Leon, it is the numbers. Mm -hmm. It is the numbers that make us a unique historical contingency that it will not repeat itself again in the history of life or in the history of the universe. Okay, we're going to get back to that. But basically, you're saying that the numbers support that human beings are unique, and Leon, representing many physicists, say the numbers say that human beings cannot be unique. Yeah, and, and, and the numbers are of different orders of magnitude, the one we are talking about. Frank, briefly describe the anthropic principle and tell us what it means for human destiny. 
Anthropic principle has several different meanings, one of which is a, just a selection principle, that we obviously have to live in a universe which is, um, permits our sort of life to actually exist. But I have to uh, agree with Francisco there. Even though I am a physicist, I think that he is correct that the likelihood of intelligent life evolving elsewhere in the cosmos is so small that in spite of the huge numbers, which Leon correctly mentions, of the number of stars in the visible universe, they are 10 to the 22nd stars. That's, That's one a 10 with 22, 22 zeros. 22 gigantic number. Right. But in spite of this gigantic number, I think Francisco's numbers are correct, that if you multiply the number of stars by the probability of intelligence evolving around one of them, you still get a number substantially less than one. Okay, let's go back to Francisco, and I want to hear about the kinds of biological uh, systems whose order of magnitude of improbability exceeds the possibility of the universe. What are some of them? Start, start thinking about what we are and how we came. And <clears throat> the history of life in the universe is like a, a, a gigantic bush. And we are a teeny weeny tweet at the very end. Life started more than three and a half billion years ago. Right. It was microscopic up to 1,000 million years ago for most of history. Right. Then multicellular organisms came about. For 90% of that history, there were no mammals or anything like that. Then we have the mammals, and 99.9% .9 of the time since the origin of the mammals, there were no human, human beings. Right. Now, so in a, at any one time, you have thousands and thousands of branches, and these events happen only in one of those branches. These events depending, depended on millions and trillions of events. If any one of them would have changed along the way, we would not be here. Well, the, ca so, the counter-argument may be that many, some of those other paths might have produced a different kind of intelligence. Th they, they didn't. They didn't, certainly not here. So that proves the improbability. We are here because we happen. I mean, all events that happen have happened. That's the one thing the end of it. sure. <laughs> but, but, you know, any, any one change in these contingent events would not have led to human beings or intelligence of the kind that we would recognize as intelligence. Uh, so we, you have improbabilities of the order of 10 to the 22, or 10 to the minus 22, multiply again and again and again. So no matter how many stars are in the universe and how many universes there are, there are no other human beings. Bruce, what do you do with that? Well, I'm a geologist, so we'll <laughs> get the geological <laughs> perspective compared to the biological. And, and from that point of view, this progression you mentioned through the strata, the development of the different life forms resulting in us. Several things. There's no scientific miracles at all. It doesn't, there, everything we see there is plausible, including the formation of the Earth itself, now that we have space and meteorite information. So that's one thing. We don't see anything that requires some kind of two stars passing close together like the old theories were and so forth. Second thing that comes from that, and I think this is an overriding perspective is that we ourselves are very early in a process. And I liken that if I'm out hiking and I have my boots and I look down, I see a bunch of ants crawling around. The ants have a kind of intelligence. They have a behavior pattern. They have probably some kind of self-awareness. Uh, there's no it's way an that... assumption, but go ahead. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But there's no way that, well, I could take a dog, but let's take this. There's no way the ant could imagine what's in my mind. I have far more awareness of what's out there Yet I consider myself a very primitive being compared to what's really necessary to understand things. The consequence of this is one, humility, but two, it makes you very suspicious of closed arguments. I know all there is to know, and therefore I can prove that's impossible because I don't think we're smart enough to make that statement. Well, uh, let's get back to basics. What is the Drake equation? Uh, this was a, a, a specific <coughs> way of multiplying a number of things to come up with a life. Uh, Greg, you familiar with that? Oh, sure. It's, it's a basic argument. It says uh, start with, with uh, say, the number of stars that form, multiply by the probability they'll have planets, then by the probability that you 